This video is a part of Experience Scaler for Free initiative. To get full content, please visit the link given in the description below. One algorithm that I wanted to address, which is called bucket sort. If you guys remember, we did something called a count sort, right? Which is when the elements were in limited range, we would just count the frequency of elements and that would help us sort. Bucket sort is a slight variant of that. Variant being that if I can categorize numbers into buckets, where I know the buckets are sorted in, in some fashion, then the sorting problem becomes easier for me. Radix sort is exactly bucket sort. For example, hypothetically, let's say you had a lot of numbers. So let's say I had 456, 923, let's say I had 150, let's say I had 268, and let's say I had 12. And maybe I also have 950. Now imagine I also create 10 buckets, 10 buckets, bucket 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is for the, the most significant digit of the number. Let's say the hundredth place of the number, assuming that all of the numbers are smaller than 1000, they can be 1 million, 10 million as well. So then we'll choose the most significant bit and we'll keep it the same position for all, all numbers. If I do that, then I know that 423 will go in the fourth bucket. Most significant digit is four. Most significant digit here. Assuming all of for all of them, the most significant digit that we're looking as, at is the third digit from the back. So 923 will go in the nine bucket. 150 will go in the one bucket. 268 will go in the two bucket. 012 will go in zero bucket. 950 will go in the nine bucket. What I know is now if I start going bucket by bucket, and I have sorted the numbers within a bucket. If I have sorted the numbers within a bucket, and if I just start picking numbers from here and appending them, then I end up getting the entire array sorted. Why? Because I definitely know that any number that is starting with zero is definitely going to be smaller than any number starting with one. So dividing them into buckets and then sorting the buckets within themselves, I mean, sorting the numbers within a single bucket, that helps me reduce the complexity to some extent. And I'll show you an example of that to a major degree, which is what is called as radix sort. But the idea is if I can break them into buckets where buckets already have some ordering defined, then I can, my job becomes just simply appending the numbers in the buckets. And that might give me a sorted array. And I'll give you a few examples to sort of talk about what bucket sorting is. And we'll do one problem on bucket sorting as well, which is a hard problem, but we'll do that. What kind of data structure can I use for buckets? Think of them as, for example, vector, of vector of int. So for example, your V of zero is a vector of numbers. V of one is also a vector of numbers and then so forth. So the concept of bucket sort is very simple. If you can split numbers into buckets where buckets themselves are ordered in some fashion, then I can sort numbers within the buckets and then I merge them. That gives me a sorted answer. If numbers are not on the same order, how do we put them in bucket? So even here, if you see like 12 was not of the same order, I just added another zero to get it to the same order. So imagine I have numbers as 950, 1, 12, 923, 256. I'll just add zero to make sure they are all of same length. How do we keep the value sorted in one bucket? I mean, within the bucket, I mean, just use quick sort or whatever kind of sorting you want to use there. Insertion sort, quick sort, whatever you want to use. Let's take an example. I mean, bucket sort alone isn't enough. Bucket sort paired up with a few observations is actually very powerful. So one observation that leads to sorting algorithm is called radix sort. The way radix sort works, imagine again, you have a bunch of numbers to sort, right? Again, I'll, I'll pick the same thing, which is, let's say I have 923, 950. Let's say I have 12. Uh, let's say I have the number one. Let's say I have number 100. Let's say I have 150. Let's say I have 650 and 688. Hypothetically, let's say I have a bunch of these numbers. So what radix sort says is, Look, I mean, at the end, if I was at the end, let's make all of these guys equal length. So add zeros wherever applicable. If all of these numbers are of equal length, then at the end, most significant bit, this bit is the most important bit. Obviously, if the most significant bit of one number is uh, smaller than the other number, then the overall number is definitely smaller. It is only a problem when they both are equal. Then I will look at other digits. So I know that. So what I want to do is I want to start sorting digit by digit with most significant digit being the last place where I sort because I know this is the final step. 
So what Radix sort does is it says, let's start with the least significant digit. Let's first sort based on this. And what do I do? I basically create again, 10 buckets corresponding to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I will first look at the last digit. Based on that, 923 goes here, 950 goes to 0, 012 goes to 2, 001 goes here, 100 goes to 0, 150 goes to 0, 650 also goes to 0, 688 goes here. And then I append these guys, right? What will happen once I have done this step? All of the numbers will be sorted by their last digit. So I get 950. 100, 150, 650, 001, 012, 923, and 688. I sorted numbers based on their last digit. Now let's look at the next digit. I repeat the same process again, but with the next digit now. I'm going to erase all of these guys from here. We are now going to look at the second digit. I say that now let's look at these numbers again, one by one. But the second digit is what we are looking at. So 950 goes at 5. 100 goes at 0, 150 goes again at 5, 650 also goes at 5, 001 goes at 0, 012 goes at 1, 923, 923 goes to 2, and 688 goes to 8. I'll again append these guys. What this would make sure is now everything is sorted based on the last two digits. So I append, and when I append, I basically get 100, 001. 012, 923, 950, 150, 650, and 688. And now the last step is the magic step, which is where I look at the most significant bit. So I erase all of this again. I look at the most significant bit and I bucketize these guys based on the most significant bit. So 100 comes here, 001 comes here, 012 comes here, 923, 950, 150, 650, and 688. Now, once I append them, all of the numbers should be sorted, which you would see 001, 012, 100, 150, 650, 688, 923, 950. Now, this final array that we've gotten, this is sorted. What has happened? We can take MSB directly. The only problem is then within the bucket, if you have multiple numbers, and think of like when you have a million numbers, right? You only have 10 buckets based on MSB. That means every bucket on average will have 100,000 numbers. And if you go to solve uh, or sort of sort each of those buckets separately, it will take you a lot of time. But here I can sort the entire array by doing this function, the number of digits number of time. So imagine all of the numbers had five digits. I'll do this operation five number of times and my entire array would be sorted in every, for every single digit, for every single digit, I am putting them in buckets, 10 buckets. And then I'm appending them, which is an order n operation, right? So my total amount of time taken is order n into max number of digits. Space is assuming that we are taking a vector of vector. The total space taken by vector of vector combined across all of this is order of n. So I'm using an order on n extra space. Actually, order of 10 plus n. This is order n. Do we need to compare an element with the existing elements present in the bucket? No. Right now, it, because the moment you start doing that, then your complexity increases. Currently, it is just very dumb way of appending to existing numbers in the bucket. Why can't we take MSB to LSB? I mean, when we start with MSB in the first step, we would definitely have put the bigger numbers to the first half of the array, the smaller numbers to the second half of the array. That I completely agree with. In fact, numbers would be sorted based on their first digit. But as you go to the second digit within these numbers, if the sorting is happening in the right way or not, because you will have, let's say you look at second digit as zero, right? Now, some of those zero numbers will come from the numbers that had the first digit as nine. Some of those zero numbers will come with some numbers where the first digit was six. For example, let's, let's look at this example itself, right? If I started from MSB, then what would have happened? Let me erase this. My first two numbers will go in the nine bucket, 923, 950. 012, 001, 100, 150, 650, and 688, which is great. Now, if I append them, then I get this, which is almost sorted. The problem is when I move to the next digit, it's then that it becomes a problem because 012 will come here, 001 will come here. Now, 100 will also come here. However, I know that 100 
should only come after 012. When I will merge, then I wouldn't know how to maintain this ordering. I mean, I'm using digits here. You can do the same thing for bits. There will only have two buckets, 0 and 1. Here I have 10 buckets. You'll only have two buckets when you're dealing with bits. When you go from LSB to MSB, that means MSB takes higher priority because it is the last deciding factor. When you go from MSDB to LSB, then LSB starts taking higher priority. So time complexity is N into number of digits. If D is the number of digits, that is your time complexity. Usually the number of digits is the same order as log N. It's actually log N to the base 10. N being the maximum number in the array. Number in array. So, I mean, um, usually radix sort is good number to know and good approach to know because this can be applied at multiple places. That being said, again, like not very commonly used because n log n, you can just directly use your sort function. Why would you go and take the pain of implementing radix sort when it has very similar time complexity? If all of what we have discussed till now, if that makes sense, I'll give you one problem which will actually make the bucket sort even clearer. The reason why we have bucket sort. Explain the time complexity again. So if you look here, what do we, what are we doing? We are taking digit by digit, right? So first we look at the last digit and for that digit, what do we do? We put them in these 10 buckets, right? So basically what happens is what is the last digit of any number? Let's say I, I go, I basically I do this, right? I say I goes from zero to N and we calculate the last digit. Digit is equal to array of I mod 10. That is your last digit. And then you put it in the, the same bucket. So for example, let's say if you have bucket array, it's a bucket of digit dot add AI, right? You do that. All of this is order N process for the last digit, correct? And then eventually I'll put, I'll basically look at numbers in every bucket and I'll keep appending them in another array. All of this is order N process. I'll have to do this for every digit, correct? So if all numbers have, let's say five digits, then my complexity would be n into 5 because for every digit I'll do an order n operation. If every number has d digit, then it becomes order of n into d. How n log n is similar to n into d. So n into d makes sense, right? Order of the algorithm is n into d. That makes sense. Okay. okay. Now what is d? What is it like given a number x, what is the number of digits that x would have? How do you find that? Basically, how do you find number of digits? You basically divide X by 10. You check if it is zero yet. Then you again divide it by 10 further. This is 10 power two. Then you divide X by 10 power three, X by 10 power four, 10 power five and so forth, right? When X by 10 to the power I is zero, which is like now 10 power I has become bigger. Then that is where you have the number of digits, okay? If I just put it like this, I mean, basically if X has I digits, then X is approximately equal to 10 raised per I approximately, which means if I take log 10 on both sides, then I basically get I is equal to log of X that you agree. So if, if there is a number X, then X has basically log base 10 X number of digits. So therefore I'd say like whatever is the highest number in the array, then D is basically log of that highest number. So your D is almost the same as N log X, X being the highest number. So bucket sort is more generic. Right? Like bucket sort just says, hey, look, my fundamental is you can create any sort of bucket you want. You can create a bucket of all numbers from 1 to 100, all numbers from 100 to 1000, all numbers from 2000 to 3000. You could create any bucket that you want, as long as it covers all range. You put numbers in the bucket where you know that every number in bucket one is going to be smaller than every number in bucket two. So you just bucketize these numbers, you sort them separately, and then you append. That becomes bucket sort. It is very generic. Radix sort is using bucket sort in one way. Why this type of bucketing works? Going for all positions instead of just MSB or LSB. Let's say if you just go for MSB, there wherever two numbers have different MSB, most significant digit. There, I mean, you probably can only do with most significant digit. The problem is there will be a few numbers that will have the same most significant digit. In fact, there are only 10 possible most significant digit, right? So if you have, let's say, 1000 numbers, then on average, you'll have 100 numbers in every bucket, right? For example, here as well, I had 950 and 923. They'll all go to the nine bucket. Now, how to actually decide the ordering between these? In fact, if you have a lot of numbers in the bucket, then how do you figure out the ordering between those? That is not clear. So therefore, you can't decide only based on most significant digit. You'll need to somehow sort these guys within the who have the most significant bit as nine as well, right? Internally, you'll need to sort them. So there are two ways. One is like 
you just say i'll bucketize based on the most significant digit and i will sort each bucket right so what happens is if i had n numbers then on average each of the buckets will have n by 10 numbers to sort them i'll take n by 10 log n by 10 and i'll have 10 such buckets so i'll finally multiply by 10 this will give me n log n by 10 which is the same as n log n so i end up reaching the same algorithm which i have anyhow done before this does not seem to be an improvement so therefore i said like can i improve further on it and and there we said maybe if instead of saying that we'll sort the numbers in the same bucket if we could do bucket sort multiple times in a way where at the end of it all of them would have been sorted then that would be nice so i say you know what like for the sorting based on the most significant bit, one thing is if I can somehow reach a state where numbers with the same most significant bit, they are already sorted in some way. That would be awesome. But to sort the numbers with the same most significant bit, for example, if you remove the most significant bit, you'll need to sort them by the remaining bits. There also, if you just again break it down recursively, you'll reach the same state. Like you'll first have to sort based on the least significant bit, then the least significant and most significant together. And then the last three together, last four together and so forth. Uh, in Radix, you have log base 10 of not the number of elements. I mean, so in n log n, n is number of elements. This is log base 10 x, which is the highest element in the array. This is not the number of elements. This is highest element in array. Two different things. But yeah, I mean, um, in, in cases of log n, if you have, let's say, 1 million entries, 10 plus 6 entries or 10 plus 7 entries, the log n is typically 20, 22, 24. In the case of numbers, the number of digits is probably still 8 or 9. So it can perform twice as faster. If max is less than n, go for addix sort. That, that I wouldn't say. If your log of 10 max is less than, in fact, significantly less than log n, then go for radix sort. Okay, in case of integer, we could use radix. That's why I said right? like if your log of max is less than log of n, you could use radix that might run just a slightly faster. Even if you go with bits, yes, you will eventually end up sorting. Just that the number of iterations will be more. All right, let's move to the next problem. Imagine you're given a bunch of numbers, which are not sorted, by the way. So let's say you have 5, 8, 3, 1, 6, some numbers, right? And, and you've been given this array that you cannot modify. So this is a constant array. Cannot be modified. Now what you need is that if this array was sorted, let's say if this array was sorted, the numbers would be 1, 3, 5, 6, 8. Actually, let me change the numbers a little bit. Let's say this number was 7. Right. If this number was 7, then the numbers would be 1, 3, 6, 7, 8. And then in the sorted array, if you were to look at adjacent difference, the so difference here is two, difference here is three, difference here is one, and difference here is one. There you have to find out what is the maximum gap between the numbers when the array are sorted. In this case, the maximum gap is three. So you say the answer is three. So given an array, how do you find this maximum gap if the given array is constant? And obviously like one answer is you make a copy of this array, you sort the array and you look at the adjacent differences and you take the maximum of that, which becomes time complexity order of n log n space complexity order of n. Can you do something better than this? I'll repeat the question once more. You're given an unsorted array. The array is not sorted. What you have to find is if the array was sorted and if you looked at the adjacent numbers differences, what is the maximum difference you can find? What is the max gap you can find? If you like the video, please do not forget to like, comment and share this video with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel to get notified about the new upcoming videos.